Vacations, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Today Ben. we're going to talk about uh, uh, an excerpt from Crossover Classics 2. Uh, not nearly as well received as Crossover <laughs> Classics 1. Oh boy. But we've done excerpts from this as well. We did uh, Batman The Punisher. Okay. Right. That one was not great. No, it was cool. That was the one where uh, Punisher meets the Joker. He's like... This guy's gotta die. Well, he was going to, yeah. But, like, there's that constant Batman being like, You can't kill him. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, Batman's a real putz in that yeah. one. And we made allusions to, but we'll never cover, <laughs> the one before that, in which uh, Batman, as real Batman, Jean-Paul Valley and Punisher don't team up and fight Jigsaw, and it totally sucks. That's it, not a cross. I don't even know what that is. It's, just, I, it's I a waste it of paper and in... ink. <laughs> the ones in the other's universe, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, it's kind of neat to think about until you think about it for more than a few seconds, and you're like, waste of time! <sighs> but uh, I do remember that the solicits for that crossover showed real Batman and, and Punisher, and then the Asriel Batman Nightfall story arc clearly got away from them. Mm. And so I saw the cover morph. I remember I seen three different incarnations of that cover. The first one was real Batman and Punisher doing this, doing this thing. And then I saw, like... Batman 500, like, cool Azrael Batman and Punisher jumping and doing their thing. And then I saw, like, dopey idiot, like, moving, like, walking tank Batman and Punisher <laughs> doing their thing. And I'm like, this pun this crossover got went through a lot of rewrites. <laughs> no! And it went from something I wanted to read to something that I w read anyway, but hated. I mean, is it possible that that crossover turned into the Batman Punisher that we read? I think it must have. I think they, they must have been that they were like, like, this is the image! This is the thing! We'll just use it elsewhere. We'll just wait. <laughs> we'll wait a year and we'll put it out later. But this one we're doing uh, is Batman and Captain America from John Byrne. He both wrote and uh, drew it. Okay. And right. it has the added bonus of being an Elseworlds story. Oh. So it's not just a crossover. It's not like it takes place in 1996 and everyone's edgy and cool. Right. Because nobody was cool, but everybody was edgy. Uh, in this Elseworlds story, it's 1945. Oh. And both characters were around back then. So it's John Byrne telling an Elseworlds story as though we were doing a comic about the Batman and Captain America from 1945. Damn it. That's cool. I'm, I like this, but I won't... Since it's 1945, I want Batman to be fighting World War II with Captain America. <laughs> right? That'd be cool. Uh, they deal with with World War II, obviously, because it's still going on. Mm -hmm. But they don't go to war together. What does Batman do during World War II? He fights the criminal underworld. Like he always does. He dodges the draft as well. Well, the criminal uh, underworld uh, was supplying weapons to Hitler. Yeah, sure. uh, now, that being... No. Uh, like the Scarecrow fear that'd toxin? That would be cool. They didn't do that. Uh, yeah, the Scarecrow just modified his fear toxin into a new type of gas. Well, they that put you it in artillery use. shells. Right. Sold it to that'd be cool. <laughs> they didn't do that. And John Byrne does kind of like add his own modern sensibilities to this crossover. So mm -hmm. it's not just like... It's not really dopey. But it is like kitschy and classic like okay. it's supposed to invoke that feeling of nostalgia mm -hmm. for an era that we were uh, you know 50 years removed from right. uh but still it's it's uh it's a good idea for it to be an elseworld story because it's not weighed down by continuity it can yes. do anything mm -hmm. it can be anywhere right so I, I like that yeah uh idea anyway let's, let's see let's how it goes out. let's find out story opens in gotham in january yes it's like January 1945. Oh, I don't see any snow. No, they do say... You know what's funny? I don't either, but John Byrne does say that the, the cars race along the snow-slick pavement. Uh, no snow to be found. <laughs> well, it's all dirty snow. It's so Gotham. He, he yeah. He wrote the script, so and then he was white. like, I don't really want to draw snow. Yeah, He wrote the damn thing! <laughs> like, he wrote it, and he drew it! Like, just change it! You are drawing it! And he's like, oh, I don't want to draw snow. I'll just put rain-slick pavement. Like... No. Nope. Just, no, just, no it doesn't have the alliteration then. I need the double S. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, stupid. Is that is that a standard Joker car with the Joker's face on the front? That's the Joker mobile. Well, because Ow. Batman has the bat on the yeah. front. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Oh, Hello. Damn. So Batman's giving chase to the Joker in a classic story of Batman and Robin <laughs> chasing the Joker down. Nice. Hey, Robin's not wearing his seatbelt. He's not safe. I'm sure he it's is. It's 1945. Nobody's wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> 
<laughs> there is no seatbelt. There's just that handhold to hold on to. Yeah, exactly. That's right. There's no shit handle. That's right. You just, oh, this is not going to help me. So This is like a bus. Joker tries to uh, evade capture from Batman and a fleet of cop cars by uh, releasing... Because the Joker mobile has his own set of gadgets and yep. bullshit. So he shoots like a, like a, an oil slick behind him and then... Out of the front of the Batmobile comes a street sweeping device which cleans <laughs> up the slick. And yes. you know, Robin's like, gee, Willikers, Batman. It looks like that really worked out. That's right, Chum. Not only is it great to get rid of the oil, <laughs> but it's good to clean up Gotham City. He doesn't quite suck it up like Adam West. Right. And his, like, shark repellent. <laughs> yeah, no. We don't have any of that shit. Right. Except for a street sweeper. Street sweeper. We, we, all right, so we have exactly that shit. <laughs> but we have the thing that they need for this very specific Wait, this scenario. car is Bat 2? Yeah. Where's Bat 1? I don't know. What is Bat 1? Must be in the shop. <laughs> you know what? Maybe Batman did research on the Joker's car, and he knows that it has an oil slick, so he has this gadget specifically to combat the Joker. Uh, I will He's say, got a fleet of different Bat cars. He, well, he does, but uh, not quite at this point. Anyway, so Joker makes his way down the pier, and they're like, well, he's trapped There's now. There's no way out of here. There's no yeah. way out of here. And then Joker pulls a lever in the Joker mobile, mm -hmm. and the whole car opens up, and then his ejector seat fires him across the city, and then he parachutes away. I nice. like the fact that it's a giant spring because he looks like a huge jack-in-the-box. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's a fun little image. Yeah. So then... Uh, I also imagine it makes a great sproing sound. It must. Burn does not add a sproing sound wow. effect or any sound effect for that matter. Interesting. But uh, so then, you know, Batman and Robin are like, well, I guess the trip wasn't a total loss. We get to inspect the Joker's car, which he left behind. Mm. And Batman discovers a small little thing, which he doesn't mention by name or refer to. And he does keep it away from Robin. He doesn't want Robin to know what he found. It's a crowbar. And uh, it's, it's a... It's, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> it's a crowbar. This, this Robin is not beaten to death with a crowbar, but I get your joke. So... Then, uh... Look, this is Dick Grayson. I like what he said. I want you to know I thought it was funny. It was funny. It was a fair joke. <laughs> Not continuity accurate, but I'll give you that one. So, uh, then Dick Grayson says, Do you hear a ticking sound? Batman's like, Oh, get away! So then Batman pushes Robin out of the way, mm. and the two of them barely escape the Joker mobile exploding. And then, this transitions to war, where Captain America is with Sergeant freaking Rock, who was a World War II comic book character published by DC Comics. Oh, Wow. Which, when I first saw, I'm like, that guy looks like Sergeant Rock. And then Cap refers to him as Rock. And I'm like, oh, that's cool! Like, DC had their own Captain America. Yeah. And he's this grizzled, murderous war sergeant. He's got a five o'clock shadow all the time. He smokes and he kills Nazis. That's awesome. That's what he does. So it's like, as opposed to Marvel's like, no! Right. <laughs> But, uh, and, uh, actually, a friend to the town, Joe Kubert, was, like, made his bones drawn Sergeant Rock and stuff, so. <clears throat> Are they shooting lasers from these Nazi Well, this is, war this, is a, this is a war wheel. It's a uh, giant wheel. It's almost the terror drum. Yes. <laughs> the technodrome. Technodrome. Oh, no, you, like, oh, no, you also mean terror drum, because Cobra had a terror drum. Oh. Yes! That's what I meant! <laughs> but you're thinking of a technodrome! <laughs> yes, I am. You liar! <laughs> So what? It rolls? Yeah! What? Okay. It's a huge tank that rolls. This part rolls, this it, part stays stationary. Oh, it makes okay. sense. Yeah. I was like, how do these things not get crushed when it turns? This, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is... The well, if you know, uh, G.I. Joe had a little, uh... <laughs> actually, it was Cobra. Had this saw thing where it was like a, a wheel. Yeah. And it, like, rolled in the ground, but there was a stationary part in the center where the person uh, yeah. could pilot it. Yeah. This in, is like a giant version of that. This is literally trends. that in a comic book wow. that, like, yeah, the Nazis have. It's a war wheel. Well, how uh, do you know the Nazis have it? <laughs> because branding, old chum! So Cap is like... That thing is awesome. Oh, crap, I gotta fight this giant ridiculous thing! That should be a Hydra. So, yeah. Uh, so then he basically goes like, nah, and he talks to himself because yeah, there's no otherwise else. how will we know what he says or what he's thinking? So then he, uh, he goes like, my shield is nigh indestructible. So he shoves his shield into one of like the gears oh. and it just shakes, it, it, it fucks up the wheel and then the wheel just falls on its side. Nice. And then, uh, Sergeant Rock and his squad like hold the Nazis at gunpoint and they all surrender. <laughs> An entire gigantic wheel full of Nazis surrenders to, like, four guys. Yes. 
Well, I you broke our machine. That's it. We're that's done. It. We're you've, done. You've defeated us. I think we can bum rush them, gentlemen. No, no, no we Nine. lost. <laughs> we no, lose the wheel over. We we lost. We've been we defeated. Have to stop. Yeah, the rules of engagement <laughs> clearly dictate. I'll get the manual. It's so. okay because they're going to take us to a to a POW camp. Yeah, and we'll we're we'll going to have coffee and, and tea. Yeah. And... Oh yeah. That's so what then, uh, Rock gives Captain America orders from the brass. And they're ordering Cap and Bucky to go stateside. They have to come home. All right. Hey, Rock, how long are you holding on to this letter? Oh, just about two weeks. <laughs> I needed you for this mission. Come on, Cap, come on. So, uh, Cap and Bucky make their way. Oh, uh, Cap, of course, he gets some information. He keeps the information secret from Bucky. You know, Bucky knowing about what's what's about to happen. Well, like in the, in the, in the letter? It yeah. It tells more than just come back? Yes. So Cap and Bucky... So they both keep it secrets. From their little sidekicks. From their little, their little friends. Yeah. <laughs> so Cap and Bucky are being uh, flown back uh, to... Well, actually, they're going to Gotham. Okay. And uh, on they actually... They, they're told that they can't land because another plane has priority. And so they're in a holding pattern. And then uh, they get a radio transmission from the priority plane that it has been hijacked. So then... Cap and Bucky order their pilot to, like, sidle up to the other plane. Uh-huh. And the guy's like, hey, listen, like, this is a transcontinental plane. Like, we are out of fucking gas, man. Like, I'm not going to be sidling up to nothing. Mm-hmm. So Cap's like, I got this, no problem. Bucky, you go with the man. And I will jump into the other plane with no parachute. <laughs> uh, that's something Cap that's would awesome. do. I buy yeah, it. totally. Yeah. He winds up jumping out of, the, out of this moving plane onto another moving plane. And he... He basically, like, snags a line onto the wing of the back of yeah, the other plane. Yeah, he grabs a guy Yeah, the tail. It. That's yeah. awesome. He also yells, Geronimo. Yeah, of course he does. <laughs> what? What's wrong with that? Just because it's culturally insensitive. It's 1945. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what old folk used to yell when they jumped. Yeah. Okay. Except that that comes from World War II. <laughs> yes. They actually shoot the wire that he's hanging from, which mm-hmm. I believe would cripple uh, at least some parts of the plane. Oh, naturally. And make it difficult. To, uh, yeah. It's probably the rudder that it controls there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the gunner turns around and says, I'm sorry, son. They got they us. Got us. <laughs> <laughs> so they shoot him. He get, He's, he's, uh, he's, he's getting, in peril. He's in peril. And then Batman arrives via the bat plane and a rope ladder. And he catches Cap in midair. Ah. He says, I gotcha now. And Cap immediately knows who he is. Yes. He's, he's aware of Batman. They've never met Batman. before, but they know each other. They know of each other. <laughs> right. Now, we've never met before, have we? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, then Batman and Cap uh, fly. They basically redo Cap's plan, but together. And Robin flies the Bat plane. And then Batman and Cap enter the, uh, the priority one plane oh, and then robin also okay. refuels the transport plane he should they don't, they don't <laughs> no happen. it just goes to lands no. but batman and cap kick the shit out of all the like hijackers and what's amazing is there's n- th- this it says like we would call this like a fight except that it's not because captain america and batman easily defeat these guys it's more of a slaughter <laughs> yeah like yeah <laughs> with fists like, yeah. they debunk them into submission yeah, Cap's just like shooting them all, and Batman's like, "No, Cap!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, like in, what? what? I was so oh, sure they oh, were bad guys. What yeah, are you, the Nazis supposed to do? You yeah, know, Batman in 1945 have been like, "Yeah, yeah, now do it." <laughs> yeah, listen, in 1940, in the 1940s during World War II, there are definitely covers, at least covers, mm-hmm. of Batman comics where Batman is firing a machine gun at Germans, and Robin is feeding it bullets. <laughs> So, yep. no, in the 40s, Batman had no qualms about murdering Nazis. Well, here's the thing. Or guns. I'm or not going to kill yeah. a bad guy. No. But Nazis are human. But I'm going to save them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From these bullets that I'm fucking <laughs> Yeah. But no, uh, in this case, neither Captain America nor Batman are murderers. And in fact, they took a lot of time to retcon in that Cap did kill Nazis. Okay. When he first started out, they, they didn't care. Okay. You know, yeah. 1940, whatever. Right. He probably killed Nazis. But then, like, around, like, the 60s and 70s, they were like, no, he didn't. Like, Cap did not kill anyone. Right. Yeah, because he our enemy like, now is the Russians. Knocked them out. Yeah, he just knocked them out and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then, in, like, the 90s, they they were like, or in, in the 2000s, they are like, no, he killed Nazis. And, right. like, and we can't get around that. Like, he's a soldier. It's, it's oh, 
here's the thing. It's it's not that we it's not that like we, we don't need to condone pr- killing. Yeah, we don't we we need to worry. We don't need to like worry about continuity. It's more like we can't argue that he was a soldier and right. didn't kill people. And we need to be unafraid of the idea that Cap did kill Nazis. Yeah. It, we can all agree that's cool, right? <laughs> Indiana Indian Jones killed them. There's a sight gag where he shoots 12 Nazis with one bullet. And John Williams has a whimsical, adorable <laughs> score to that. Okay, if that's okay, Cap can have killed Nazis 70 years ago. Yeah. You know, like, moving yeah, on. foreign on. soil, in a war, like... It's okay. It's- it's okay. It's totally different. He's not like going in the city and fighting gangs, and he's like, oh, "I used to kill Nazis, just cracking <laughs> necks and filling alleys with bullets, like, and dead bodies." Yeah, yeah, no. So, uh, all right. So they get the plane down. So they get the plane down, and they discover that this plane has been hijacked, and they were trying to abscond with Oppenheimer. Oh wow! Okay. And now we know that's cool. that the information they were gathering was the construction of the bomb. So Oppenheimer was in Gotham. It's the Gotham Project. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, but you understand. Building, I, I already built the A bomb, but now I'm building the B bomb. <laughs> now it's the called, Bat bomb. Yeah, it's called Fat Boy. You know, the Manhattan Project wasn't called the Manhattan Project because, because it, it was, was made in Manhattan. <laughs> well, it definitely was not made in. Manhattan. Yeah, well, John Byrne doesn't know that. So this is the Gotham Project. <laughs> Batman knows about it, and Cap knows about it. But Cap knows about it because. He's a soldier, and he's a captain, and he's been told this information by his superiors. Batman finds this information, and Cap's like, I don't like the fact that you have that information. Like, I don't like the fact <laughs> that you know, know that. that. You're not supposed to know that. But uh, I also like Captain America, Pr- Vice President Truman doesn't know about the bomb yeah. project, and you know. So, so shut up. <laughs> and Cap's like, fair enough. Yeah. And they really are. He, he really is like, he's like, I don't like the fact that like a civilian knows about this high, this, this top secret like military project. But since you do, let's go kick some ass. And then they team up. <laughs> I can't put that genie back in the bottle. So. No. So then they, they land the plane, and then they start to interrogate their, uh, you know, the hijackers. And suddenly, they all die because of a slow-acting poison that the Joker infected them with. And they all die with these horrible grimaces on oh, their so faces. Oh, so the Joker is involved. Yeah. Ah. What, what happened to Bucky? Are they, they just oh, Bucky them? lands. Oh. No, Bucky <laughs> and, the, and the pilot, like, landed at ah, the airfield. Bucky didn't get to help in any way. No, he did not. That's okay. Dick really didn't help that much either. He flew the plane. He flew the plane, he flew the plane yeah. and then left. Yeah, yeah, but Bucky rode in a plane. <laughs> and then landed. I mean, that's so, what Robin should do, is like, pilot vehicles in a straight line, mm-hmm. while Batman needs them to be moving in a straight yes. line. Or, and stay uh, out of the way. or do acrobatics in a colorful costume over right. there, so the Batman can kick the shit out of you from behind. Right. <laughs> See, I get the feeling that Batman already set the autopilot, and he's like, you fly the plane, Dick. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you take the control, son? Oh, great! He's, like, <laughs> He's not doing shit. No. Oh, it's already entry re entry. Oh, okay. Well. God, I'm a good pilot. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Batman finds out that it's the Joker, and of course. Captain America knows who the Joker is. He's right. heard of the Joker. Right. And As he's he would like, have yeah. if he were in the same universe. Yep. And Batman's like, well, sounds like we gotta deal with this. And, Bat- and Cap's like, yep. We gotta, we gotta deal with our own stuff. And then, uh, and then Bucky and Dick have like a little high five where they're like, hey, we're signing. They kind of like don't like each other. It's kind of funny. They also uh, look exactly the same because they both have that little black mask yes. thing. Yeah. But uh, ah, Bucky says, but... Bucky says, hey, Cap, you see how Robin was looking at me? Guess he knows who, who's got the better partner and the better lifestyle. <laughs> and then we cut to Bucky having waited in the hallway for four hours while Captain America has a debriefing <laughs> with all the other superiors. And he's like, right, that's a good cut. He's like, Jimmy Jillikers. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, they basically tell Cap, like, here's the thing. Um, there's, you know, there's some goings-on with the Gotham Project, and, uh, we know that the Joker made a play for Oppenheimer, and so the Joker must be aware of this high, this this top-secret project. How would he get that information? We assume... Well, you named it the Gotham Project. (laughs) It's it's internally! But uh, they basically, they jump to conclusions and assume that Bruce Wayne has enough money and influence to have gotten that information and might have sold out the U.S. government to the Joker. No! That's great! That's what they assume. (laughs) Why would they assume that? That's... 
Because not he's not a soldier. Well, there's he's nobody who could have possibly learned this except for the richest man in Gotham. Yes, <laughs> who's Ergo, a who's a billionaire playboy. Oh my god, and a philanthropist and, or a, a CEO of Wayne Corp. Exactly. Do and, they note any ties between his company in Germany or something? Anything? Uh, he says any? no. Uh, Wayne, the Wayne Foundation, is a major financial benefactor for the Gotham Project. Oh. And what? Why? Uh, because wouldn't he then know what it was? Why would he donate money to it if he didn't know what it was for? Um, I guess he figured out what he was, but he he played dumb and was like, "Yeah, that sounds like a good idea." Or <laughs> he, this was one of the things that he has no part of. It's just the Wayne right. name. Well, and I Batman's like, "How is he being posted. Batman?" Yeah. And they're like, "We have this project called, called Project Gotham." Oh, I like. You it. might like it. I can't oh, tell you I'm anything about it. Stop but I think drilling! You, you hit oil. It. I am down. It's a Gotham related. How much money do you need? He's got a giant <laughs> right stamp that says "Approved." Done. Anything Gotham related. <laughs> All right. So, and by the way, Cap is like, that's pretty flimsy. Like, oh, Wayne okay. does a lot of acknowledgement. Yeah, Wayne does a lot of good work for this for this country and mm. for the Gotham in general. I don't think he can sell it out to a fucking clown monster. Like, right. And then they go, well, shut up, Private, because here's the thing. And here's the other thing is that the world whoa, whoa. doesn't know. I'm a captain. No, he is a Captain America, but he's a Private Steve Rogers. Yeah. Like, he's a... Oh. They're, 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 it's a secret identity. Nobody knows that Captain America and Steve Rogers are the same person. Oh. Wait, really? I did yeah. not know that. Except for the U.S. government. Oh. And so they're like, "You're going to go undercover, and you are go- we're going to we're going to pretend that like because of the uh, apprehension or attempted kidnapping of Oppenheimer, that Bruce Wayne might be a target, and so we're going to plant you." as a shadow for Bruce Wayne. And you're going to follow him around and see if you can get any information about whether he's like funneling secrets to the Joker. Okay. And Cap's like, that sounds like the worst job I've ever had. And they're like, yep. So then he goes to Wayne Manor. Damn, I got to follow around this billionaire playboy who probably eats a lot, like great food. Yeah. Goes out with all these beautiful women. And probably only has sex with one at a time, so I'll probably get some spillover. Like, yeah, it sucks. No, he does... Uh, follow him around, and Bruce Wayne's like, "No, oh, that sounds like a capital idea. I think it's a little unnecessary, but why not? Come along, Mr. Rogers, let's go. So then uh, Cap spends two boring days watching Bruce Wayne live the high life, <laughs> shopping with beautiful dames, <laughs> and, like, playing racquetball. And he's like, this sucks. You're playing racquetball or squash? It's probably squash. But uh, he's like, this Yeah, that's sucks. a rich person sport, exactly. So <laughs> then while Steve is off duty... Robin or Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne are talking, and Dick's like, "We've been playing like playing possum with this stupid captain or private or whatever for two full days. We haven't been able to do anything." And he's like, "Quiet, Dick. We've got like I'm, I've also been gleaning intel and like." As I understand it, I know that the Joker is having a meeting at this place, and so uh, I don't want to be late for my appointment with the Joker, and that's what Captain America, who's been like hiding and spying on him, hears, and he's like, oh-ho! Oh my god, they were Damn right. It. Yeah. Come on, it's Batman! The stupid like, blind punch was correct somehow. Yeah, and what's amazing Rogers, is... Come on, you can't. I, I, I know. I know, yeah. He does not. But what's great yeah, is, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I love their little conversation where he's just, he's using euphemistic language like, yes, the jo- my friend the Joker will, you know, and uh-huh. I have a, have a date. And he's like, oh, the Joker and, and Bruce Wayne have a date, eh? Mm. Oh, and they're going out. And they're gay. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so he shadows Bruce Wayne when they go to, like, Wayne's, like, high rise or whatever. Okay. And... Uh, he winds up like knocking out the like elevator operator so that he could get to the top floor. I know he's like, and I feel really bad about knocking over this poor old man, but the greater good. You mean because so he looks like a conductor in a band? That's what that's what like elevator operators and like front desk clerks looked like in 1945. Yeah, this giant handlebar mustache oh, and the fact oh, that he's a yeah. grandfather. Yeah, he's yeah, an old yeah. man. <laughs> that's what old men looked like in 1945. So Bruce Wayne goes, Wilford Brimley. He looks like Wilford Brimley. He does. He does. Yeah. Or Willie Lumpkin from uh, Fantastic Four. I he think he's gonna wear the costume of the. Oh my Robert god! You're like, nope. <laughs> Top floor, Mr. Wayne. No, he, uh, he couldn't have just snuck by him. He's got to. Yeah. Well, I guess because he would have sounded the alarm and someone yes, taking the elevator. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So uh, anyway, he he winds up going to like as far up as the elevator will let him. But Bruce Wayne is a private elevator that goes all the way to the top floor. So, so they scale the building. Yep. Yep. And then blast through the window, and he's like, "You'll have to relieve yourself of your documents, Mr. Wayne. Here we go." And so Bruce Wayne's like, I don't think so. And then, like, bust some moves. Mm-hmm. And so the two of them fight. And each of them is thinking, like, how is this person defeating How me? is this guy not already unconscious? Right. Like, there's no freaking way. And as they fight, they realize, like, oh, my God, you're Batman. You're Captain America. <laughs> and they're like, oh, that was fun. 
Like, neither one actually lands what? a punch. They just, like, they, they, they all counter each other's moves. Is it Steve Rogers upset that he's going to go see the Joker? No, he's like, oh, if you're Batman, there's no way that you're working with the Joker. Oh, you oh, meant you were going to good. go have a fight with him. Yes. I understand now. It all yeah. came together really quick. Okay. That's right. Okay, that's much better than, like, oh, hey, hey, you're Batman, you're Joker, great. We still have to fight, though. That's right, because you're working for the Joker. Even though that would make no sense. Red Skull is Of course the it's Red guy, Skull, yeah. And Red Skull wants... <laughs> Red Skull wants the bomb, and he wants to drop it on Washington, D.C. That's his plan. Okay. And he... And his plan, by the way, is hilarious, because he's like... Uh, here, you can look through this. Uh, his, Red Skull's plan is he wants to steal Fat Boy from the Gotham Project. Oh. And drop it on Washington, D.C. And in the confusion, people will assume that the Germans built an atom bomb, and that the Germans did it, Okay. And then they'll win the war. And they'll win the war, and the Americans will lose their spirit. It will break their spirit to have their capital city destroyed by the mighty force of the German like army. Uh, because that... because Red Skull reveals yeah. or betrays that like the Germans were trying to build their own, but they found it was just too fucking hard. Right. And so they gave up. So why was he taking Oppenheimer then? Yeah, that's terrible. Well, what, right? He should have waited well, until the bomb was built. Do? I guess build another one. Is it? <laughs> It's gonna take one guy yeah. for the Gotham Project, which, if it's anything like the Manhattan Project, was like hundreds of people. <laughs> well, yeah, but we only know of one. One, one of uh, the Red Skull's cronies is like, like barely questions his plan, and then uh -huh. Red Skull like throws a chemical in his face, and then his head turns into a Red Skull, and he dies. Oh, it really? Reminds me of someone. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. He he questions that the, the plan because he thinks Joker is well, he's like, why too are much you... of a loose cannon. Yeah, he's like, why are you involving the Joker? He he's insane and <laughs> seemingly doesn't have any allegiance to anybody. Like yeah. um, he's like, ah, I don't question my my, my genius. Yeah. Die. All right. So it's uh, creepy that his poison or toxin or whatever it is turns that guy's face red. It would make him a red skull, just like the Joker is, turns your face white you, and makes, makes you smile. Or <laughs> well, if it turns you white, I thought it just made you smile. No, it depends on which you... version it is, right? Precisely. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, anyway, Joker uses his uh, laughing gas and kill some guys and steal a component that they need for the plan or whatever. He's like, it's oh, not that the bomb. It must be the bomb, right? Yeah, it's the bomb. The bomb's guarded by, like, ten guys in a truck. Well, it's a secret plan. Like, there's, like, oh. there's multiple uh, guys... This is the only plan that has no bridge or whatever. Like it, the idea is that like this is a off the books top secret. Like there are multiple convoys doing like right. puppet missions. So that... secrecy is supposed to be the thing that keeps it safe, not a whole bunch of guys. No, and right. the Joker. Finds and in it fact, out like having that. yeah, and having more guys would actually attract like, attention to it. Show Does off. the Joker know where it is? Yeah, because he gets information that way. Here's okay. the thing. He just killed every other convoy yeah. until he, yeah, he just he Probably. just killed a bunch of random people <laughs> until someone told him. Which Probably. Was, I mean, yeah. we don't really get that. So uh, then, Batman and Robin and Captain America and Bucky go to the Batcave. Okay. And uh, they try and come up with like what the plan is. You know, right. like what's 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 the Joker's angle? Weren't and they, then were, wasn't Batman going to go see the Joker? Yeah, wasn't that his plan. That was the plan. Yeah. Why did he not do that? Well, he was. Yeah, just because Cap and yeah, just because Cap Bruce, showed up, right? I don't know. Cap and Batman like realized who each other were. Doesn't mean like, oh, well, the plan is off. Well, I think it's that he was gonna go. He knows what the joke is gonna be in the next day or so. Oh, okay. Or maybe he was just saying, "I have a date with the Joker." Yeah, when he didn't actually when I find him. Yeah, when I he shows his face, know, I don't know where he because is. he actually doesn't know where the Joker is gonna be because he tells the commissioner to call him when the commissioner gets any Joker sightings. Oh. And so, while Cap and Bucky and, and Bats and Robin are all talking, Commissioner Gordon calls them on the Bat phone. Right. And then uh, Batman sends Robin and Captain America to meet with Commissioner Gordon. Okay. And Gordon tells uh -huh. Cap, because okay. uh, Batman is doing another mission with Bucky, and they trade partners. And Gordon wants to talk to someone he knows, Robin. He, he won't just talk he to Captain America. He won't just listen to Captain America. Yeah, yeah. Although he immediately swoons. Yeah, because Robin shows Captain him. freaking America. Because yeah, Robin uh, shows him, he's like, and I've got a special surprise! And then Captain America like bursts through the window, and he's like, hello! And Commissioner Gordon's like, oh, Captain America! <laughs> Will you sign my uh, war bond? <laughs> he says, like, the Joker was sighted here, and here, and then Captain America uses his, his strategic mind to, like, track where they've been, and he figures out, sure. like, where it is. And then he tells Batman, and 
uh, Bucky and Bat uh, and, and Batman go to this warehouse where like the Joker was last sighted. Mm-hmm. Oh, this makes sense. <clears throat> he brings Bucky because he doesn't care if Bucky dies, right? <laughs> I assume that what happened was, like you said, like Robin's there with the commissioner, so the commissioner knows to trust Captain America, or at least he has a familiar face. Right. And then like we're not gonna leave the other one in the in the cave. Right. So There's when they too much important stuff there, I don't want you playing around. With exactly. It. So they get to the warehouse, and then uh, they get they meet some thugs and, and uh, Cap. Or, I'm sorry, and Bats and Bucky fight the thugs, and then they assume that it's Joker's thugs, but then Red Skull's like, "Nah, it's not Joker, it's me." And then he releases a like knockout gas, not Red Skull not gas Red that Skull kills gas, you. Right. No, it ha- no, and <clears throat> the reason is wonderful. Your punishment must be more severe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it, it's it's worse. He wants to. Uh, kill Batman in a ridiculous circuitous scheme sure. so that he can show up the Joker. He can prove he's better. He's like, look, I killed Batman using a silly scheme that you would have done. Nah. But I actually killed him. Yeah, what? but that actually worked. Why does he care? I he doesn't even live in the same country as I don't Joker. Know. I don't know. So, uh, Here's the thing. <clears throat> You're an American. <laughs> I need to do, do, you are, you are very, you. you are very inefficient. So he Joker did, thinks he's better than me, and I, I can't have that. that. Yeah, he, it's not <laughs> he like told enough. me he was—he thought he was better than me in one of our conversations, and it just, it just I won't have it. <laughs> and to quote you before, <laughs> nine, nine. <laughs> so he straps Bucky and Batman to identical platforms, yeah. and he's like, "Okay," uh, and then we're gonna drive away, and then the building's gonna explode. What? So that's his plan: is to blow up the building with them inside. Yes, that's gonna show up the Joker. Yes. I guess just by killing Batman, that yeah. show up the Joker. Why did he just kill him with red face gas? I don't know. <laughs> so then, I, Bucky, well, he should leave the gas in the building. That way, when the Joker finally finds Batman's body, it's got a red skull face. Right? That'd be great. Yeah. So or we should just gas the Joker when he shows up. Yeah. So Bucky, that's how much better I am than you. Yeah. I killed your villain and you. So Bucky and Cap and and Batman wake up and. Red Skull explains his plan. Right, tells him the whole thing. And uh, and and then leaves. I'm sorry, did he tie Batman up with rope? Yeah. Yep. Nope. Yeah. So uh, then he drives away, and then it's great, because Bucky, <laughs> Bucky's like, okay, Batman, I'm sure you've got some way out of this, right, Batman? Ba- Batman? And Batman's gone, and then the building explodes. And you're like, did Batman just leave Bucky to die? <laughs> Batman's like getting off the platform as Red Skull is hopping on the car <laughs> driving away. I'm sorry, like It yeah. takes him like, like he, a half He minute. didn't make it. So, so if for some reason you want to kill the Joker, <laughs> yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah, I was just playing the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it, it was the Joker. The Joker killed him. Yeah, you, you probably want to kill the Joker now, right? <laughs> right, totally. So then that'd be okay, since I understand you kill people all the time. So, uh, and and by the way, uh, Cap takes one of Batman's bat cycles, and then he and Robin go yep. to meet up with Batman and Bucky. Uh, but it's great to see, you know, because Captain America drives a motorcycle. So right, right. He's the bat bike. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, so Batman reveals that he, while he was battling the thugs and he saw the gas released, he put nose plugs in under the guise of, like, w- like wafting his cape out of the way. Oh. And so he feigned being unconscious so that when he was tied up, he, like, flexed. Yeah, oh. so, make the, it, so the rope right, was more right. loose. So then he just relaxed, and then he could slip And then out. he slipped out. Yeah. Okay. Funny that's... how you can flex an ankle. Well, he, he only needs to he get part only... of his body out. He doesn't exactly. need to get every part, because then once he's partially loose, then he can undo the yeah. parts he couldn't. So, uh, Joker meets up with Red Skull in this hangar, and they're going to drop the bomb, and Red Skull's like, Okay, so I know that I said I was going to make you rich by giving you all this money, but actually what's going to happen is you and I are going to get on this plane, and we're going to drop this bomb into Washington, D.C., and then we're going to go to Germany, and you'll be paid even more than I promised, because I have, like, German barons, and the Fuhrer himself will want to meet you, and blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> Joker is like, <laughs> Look at I'm this. sorry. Are you for fucking real? <laughs> Because Red Skull reveals himself, and he's wearing a classic Red Skull outfit of a fucking jumpsuit with a swastika on his chest. And he goes, is that like a Halloween costume or something, or are you literally a Skull Man Nazi? And he's like, no, yeah, I'm a Nazi. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to Germany, we're gonna meet with my friend Adolf Hitler, and we're gonna, we're, we're gonna live it up. And Joker's like, fucking no. Look, I may be a villain, but I'm an American! That's exactly what he says. I, I, like, I wear a crazy outfit. Yeah, to, but I'm an American bad guy. Like, yeah. He says, like, I, I, like, yeah, he says, like, I may be, like, a raving psychopath, but I'm an American raving psychopath. 
And Red Skull's like, such misplaced patriotism. Very well, like, fuck you. Also, Red Skull doesn't go, yeah, yeah, I'm a giant Red Skull Nazi, and you're a giant clown. Yeah. So, so right? wait a minute. You you thought that that I was not working for Germany, but you're working for America? Like, he didn't, <laughs> no, he just thought, like, well... Like, why are you surprised that I am actually well, because loyal was, to Germany? You're clearly loyal to America. Like, I you know? had you steal Oppenheimer. Yeah, I mean, like, you know. Yeah, what you think was going to happen oh, with Oppenheimer? <laughs> I thought you were French. <laughs> I thought you were just going to take the glory away from America. Uh, it's amazing. It's great. Okay. It's just, just a couple of fucking idiots <laughs> <laughs> bumbling around. So then they Yay. both shoot each other with their own toxins, and they oh, don't shit. work because the toxins are too similar. Oh. And they both have immunities to their own toxins. Wait, I see a lo- Oh, that's coughing. I thought okay. I saw a lot of laughing. Yeah, no, it's just coughing. So they both go like, oh, damn it, our stupid toxins don't work. And Red Skull's like, but I have more guys. And then one of the guys just cons Joker on the noggin and knocks him out. Yeah. And he's like, it's fair. The fact is, I was going to betray the Joker anyway. Because, you know, like, because actually, by the way, he says to Joker, like, you can come to Germany because you're, you're so white. You know, you're a perfect specimen of Aryan, like, superiority. But really, he was going to take him to Germany to be publicly executed as a, like, display of the kind of freaks that America lets just roam free throughout their lands. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Nice. So he... <laughs> that is intricate. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, Red Skull and his cronies, along with the unconscious body of the Joker, board the plane, destined for Washington, D.C. to drop a bomb, the, yep. uh, the, the fat boy atom bomb on top of it. Yeah. And uh, so Batman, Bucky, and Captain America and Robin in the Batplane, like, wind up flying over that plane, they deploy, like, magnetic grapplers and then kill the power and the bat plane just lands on top of it and attaches to it. Then they drill a hole through the top of the plane. Oh, uh, that's awesome. It's cool. And uh, and then they, they board the plane and fight everybody. And then Red Skull, like, makes the plane, like, dive and it separates the bat plane wow. from, the, uh, from that plane. And so, uh, you know, Robin and Bucky are in the, whatever they're called, like, you know, the bat plane. Red Skull's plane is not... We're being attacked. Drop the bomb now. No, because they're no, not, they're not where they need to be. going to get to Washington, D.C. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You drop a, a nuclear bomb anywhere in America. <laughs> yeah. It would you, be a even problem. Even it's close it to be like, Yeah, but why did they miss any right. obvious targets so much? Something's not right. I, I don't think they have a bomb at all. Yeah, I think they're just still not, It needs to be a... Listen, he's got ruthless German efficiency. There's no way he's going to do this, this evil scheme half-cocked, okay? So... Uh, it's Plus, great. like, he still thinks he can win, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, he does. He, he seals himself away. Like, while Cap goes to the cockpit to try and fight the bad guy, or, like, more bad guys, Red Skull goes to the bomb room, and he, like, seals it closed. Oh, and boy. he's like, ah, Batman, like, here's the thing. If I drop a bomb now, it's still a 50-mile radius of death. It'll be fine. Oh. So, so like, yeah. you're, you, I've, I've won. All I have to do is release the thing. And then Batman just punches Red Skull in the face through the window <laughs> in the door. <laughs> That's awesome. In the spot where his nose would be. Where yeah. his nose would be, yeah. Red Skull's like, okay, fine, I'm just gonna deploy the bomb. And then Joker's like, oh no, you don't! Because he wakes up oh. and he breaks the like lo- the, the deployment mechanism on the bomb, uh, like, you know, release. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank God. So they can't leave. I saw him swing at something. I thought he was swinging at the restraints. Right? He's like, He's like you're not gonna drop a bomb. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna drop the bomb. Yeah, it's okay if I do it. <laughs> and then he rides it down and. Well, yeah, like well, a it does so, fall. Yeah, no, so they, they well, they grapple with each other, and their combined weight on top of it releases the bomb oh, as Cap is steering it over the Atlantic. Oh, okay. Because when, ba- when 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 Batman and Captain America took control of the plane, they immediately steered it towards the Atlantic. Okay. And so uh, Red Skull's like, "Oh, I gotta drop the bomb now!" And then Joker's like, "Oh no, you don't!" And then he fucks it up, and, and then they the, tussle, and yeah. then they tussle on top of the bomb, and then the bomb just goes whoop, and they're both like. Oh, fuck. And they fall with it. And they fall with it. And Cap and Batman both go, Oh, well. Yes. Oh, were they in there? Oh, oh, no. oh no. No, it's great. Oh, they uh, they do. Like the, the, and they get vaporized by And they get vaporized by an atomic bomb. Yeah. And I'm sorry. This book kills the Joker and Red Skull. Yeah, in one fell swoop. Right. That's awesome. And, uh, and then they, like, you know, they get a call from, uh, from Bucky and Robin who have landed, and they're like, what the hell was that? Because they were did a nuclear bomb just well, they, they don't even know what a nuclear bomb is. They were completely oh, in the dark about it because right, both right. Cap and Batman didn't want to frighten their like young wards about the idea of what like the, the atomic bomb meant. I see. And so, so like they're like, "What was that brilliant flash?" And Cap says, "The dawning of a terrible and like bright new age." Oh, 
Interesting. That's deep. What was that hellacious light? There you go. Is the line. Yeah. And then uh, and you then, didn't stare directly at it, did you? <laughs> and then Batman's like, and by the way, is that a bonus? Both Joker and the Red Skull are dead. And Cap's like, you don't really believe that, do you? And Batman's like, mm, I guess I don't. <laughs> and that was the end. But then John Byrne was talking to Roger Stern, and Roger Stern was like, ooh, since you're doing an Elseworld story, you should do an epilogue. And so the epilogue is 20 years later in the 60s, Batman 2 and Robin 2 which is Dick Grayson becomes Batman right. and Bruce Wayne's son becomes Robin. Okay. And the two of them are chasing after the Joker Jr. And they're in a submarine in the Arctic and they pick up some life signs which they think might be part of the Joker scheme. So they excavate it and they find Captain America frozen in a block of ice and they wake him up and Cap's like, Bucky, no! Because that's how he wakes up every time that he's awoken. Right, right. And, uh... It's just the Captain America origin, but in the 60s, and it's like the the beginning of a new Elseworlds Batman and Captain America crossover, where like the next generation of Batman and Robin team up with with, with Captain America. But okay. Bruce Wayne is still alive, right? Yeah, yeah, he's just an he's just an older man. Okay. And uh, no, yeah, Cap goes to the to the Bat Cave, and he's like, and he meets Bruce, and Bruce is like, you know, like you have an aged day, you have an aged day, like it's great. You're like, frozen, and you're frozen, and, and Robin, yeah. Bucky is dead, though. Although, uh, in another ten years, you can retcon in that the Soviets found him. And, uh, so, you know, you got that to look got forward that whole, to. Yeah, you got that whole fun part to look forward to. Yeah, you know, when your best friend becomes a villain. And then you gotta fight him, and then it turns out, like, he's good again, and then you die or get shot by a time bullet, and then you get trapped in the past, and you have to fight your way through your memories, and your replacement becomes you. <laughs> Which right. actually... That sounds like a lot of bullshit, son. Don't worry, I've been through the exact same thing. <laughs> well, that seems improbable. Yeah, doesn't it? They actually should do a sequel. They should do a sequel yep. to this yep. where Captain America was shot by a time bullet, is forced to go back in time and fight his way through the past back to himself. Batman shot by the fucking Omega Sanction and sent back in time and forced to fight all the way back through himself. And their young wards become them... And take over for them. Huh. That's kind of weird. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and when they're back in time, they're they, like they teaming meet each up other each time. Oh Every my lifetime. god! <laughs> That'd be great. That was where I thought you were going. Yeah. 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 I'm down. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> well, what, 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 you're gonna write it? I don't no, I'm just saying. Like, oh, make it let's, happen. Let's let's pitch Ooh. it. Ooh. Batman and Captain America is just a silly, <laughs> ridiculous, self-indulgent. Yeah. Like romp the art is amazing right i, I love I, this art that's i'm so glad you say that because john byrne is an acquired taste and he's like hit or miss uh -huh. um when well, he does when he's on his a game it's so good and i, I think it really works with this era yes. like a like an elseworlds like in the past mm -hmm. book because uh, it is and like the a red little bit skull. goofy yeah like that is a great villain for him to draw well john byrne is actually mostly really famous for drawing the fantastic four oh okay uh, but he also drew Superman when Crisis retconned everything. When uh -huh. they did the debut of Superman and Man of Steel, John Byrne drew that. Okay. So the dude has experience drawing like the formations of characters and yeah. like the most iconic images of those characters. Well these like square jawed yes. guys, he does oh, a yeah. great job with that. He really does. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, yeah, Alfred looks like shit though. <laughs> well he looks he looks pudgy and old because in the forties he was. Uh -huh. He was like pudgy and round and kind of ineffectual. Alfred was? So was uh, Commissioner Gordon. Gordon. Oh, they were both of them? Mm -hmm. Well, this Alfred is... Uh... A little bit of both. He's okay. a mixture. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. that now at the end of this book, are they like, there's no time to chat, Cap. Oh, we, yes. The Russians are making trouble and we've got to get you back they, into action. They, they basically say, uh, like, you couldn't have been unfrozen at a better time. Ah, Okay. Yeah, because, and it's the 60s, so it's like, we got these young people, and they're taken to the streets, and they're listening to this groovy hip rock music, and there's, they're, they're smoking their reefers, and they, they could use a good shield in the face of American justice. I got this guy on the horn, his name's Nixon, he's gonna turn things around. Like, I assumed it would be uh, <laughs> Vietnam. Right? Like, oh, send, yeah. And what a dicey book that would be. Let's send Captain America to Vietnam. Oh, Who's God, Batman? this is terrible. Yeah. Except then he runs into a young guy named Frank Castle. Oh, shit. 
And but the thing is, like, for me, for me, I love the dichotomy between Frank Castle and Steve Rogers because, like, they're both relics of their own horrible wars, mm. and neither one could possibly fathom the wars they were in. Mm. So, like, I like that. So, putting Cap in Vietnam for me is like a betrayal of who Captain America is. I would not be okay with that. Yeah. But well, he uh, was in ice during that, right? Yes, yeah, he missed it. But I would have loved to have seen a story where, like, the U.S. government's like. This, this war is going going full quagmire on us. Get the best soldier you have and we'll make him Captain America. <laughs> like they asked Frank or Frank Castle to be Captain America of Vietnam. He's like, you got it! Ah! Like flamethrowers. <laughs> just... Now like, okay, uh, never be, do that comedian, again. basically. Yeah, he'd be the comedian. <laughs> Crossover Classics Part 2. That was that, great. That many Captain America. It's, 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 it's one fun. Of, uh, it's fun. It's a great little story. Yeah. I'll put a link in the description box below this video for you to find some version of this you could get because of course DC and Marvel would have to like agree with each other for more than a collective two seconds to get these things so this is back not available anymore oh no this is in immaculate condition this looks brand new like it was never touched yeah actually and what's funny is it probably wasn't <laughs> but it was water damaged a little yeah, bit yeah I can tell yeah. yeah this blue dot indicates that I got it for five dollars at the comic fortress nice <laughs> it was in a pile of books I'm like are you kidding <laughs> yes it's I don't a do water damage. I don't care because I was trying to get another copy so we could, like, we could all look at it at the yeah. same time because yeah. like by the way like it's cool that it's in this collection I'd much rather have it in it's like yeah. Original, because it's got this great image of Captain America's shield, but in the middle, instead of a star, it's a golden bat. It's That's like, fucking cool. It's cool. It's just a great little thing, and it's got little quotes about what it's gonna be and stuff like that. I, I like having it on its own. Like my yeah. Spider-Man, Batman stuff, that all is on its own. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, no comic book store had it wow. in the entire county, so uh, I was happy to just do it like this. But yeah, when uh, what year did it come out? Ninety six. Ninety six. Okay. Yeah, nice. The same year that most of these came out. Same year that DC Marvel these, worked together. Uh, did these do well? Not you know, well? that's a good question. I don't actually have like the metrics for how they did well or yeah. like any real way. Do you remember it when you were? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I read it. Yeah, when it came out, I, I read it. A friend of mine bought it, and I read it from his collection. But okay. uh, yeah, I bought the Batman Punisher crossovers. The I I didn't like it when I was a kid because I was like, this is lame. Really, <laughs> it's silly. And it's in yeah. the past, and I don't care about that. Well, how come Batman isn't wearing, like, a big stupid armored suit? And, <laughs> yeah, with big knife hands. <laughs> Why isn't he a total asshole? Why is this just fun? Like, literally, I bought the Batman Punisher crossover where Batman's a big, scary monster, and they don't do anything. Mm. There's a dumb fight where Punisher and Batman punch Russians in a steam bath-like room. And it's just like, this sucks. So they, they hint at the end of this book that perhaps the Joker and Red Skull survived the nuclear explosion. That they fell on top they of. Fell, they were the, falling through the air. They wouldn't have been able to survive even without the nuclear explosion. Yes. How no, could they, they possibly... What are you talking about? They would have landed in water. Yeah, falling from like 10,000 feet in the air, you'd be dead. You can't survive that. What? It's, it might as well be hitting pavement. Yeah. <sighs> well, what well, if one of them is an excellent diver? And like broke the surface tension perfectly. Well, maybe, or they, or they had like parachutes like hidden under their clothes, and they coasted out of the radius. Yeah. Or there was a submarine waiting. Could be so any of those things. Could have nobody been. knew they were going. Do you to be think there. they may have been able to parachute fifty miles away because that was the explosion <laughs> radius of the bomb? Yep. Here's the thing. Uh, for me, they don't expressly say that they survived, but they do say they're chasing the, the Joker Junior. Right. So. so, twenty years. Yeah. No, the Joker had a kid before all of this right and they grew up and became the joker and yeah nope if the joker had sex with a woman she would die <laughs> we don't know that it's just well, like, if he didn't want he, her to if he, he doesn't have, have toxic kid, blood fairly he, certain he does no he just <laughs> in he, my mind he does well he does not in reality and he would definitely have toxic sperm well that doesn't make any sense it doesn't you're happen. not making any sense Ben. yeah and you should know better we're at like 170 episodes <laughs> that's just ridiculous <laughs> That is over the line. <laughs> oh, oh, that's over the line. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's too much. That's, that's way too much, Ben. Way Whoa. too much. You're talking about sperm. That is that's inappropriate. Inappropriate. It's not like we've done a whole episode dedicated to radioactive sperm. It was not dedicated. It was just the funniest, most the... memorable thing. <laughs> or, of course, right from that a, book. a character that we may be uh, very fond of called the Jizzler. Oh, yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. Forget the Jizzler. <laughs> or try to. <laughs> 
Anyway, Batman Captain America is a great uh, story. Pick it up, check it out. I'll try to make something available for you to get. But ask your local comic book store to get it for you. Or just go online and buy it. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Mm. But uh, support your local stores. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next week with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. So long. <laughs>